meeting is being Welcome recorded. Welcome to the final weigh-in for Claire Salts. My name is Jodie Bunting and this is a free six-week course where our slimmers will lose a stone or more in six weeks. Drum roll, please. Claire, how many pounds have you lost this week? Uh, well, I've gone, I think, just over, just over a stone, so... Great. So last week you had lost 13 pounds. So you only needed to lose one pound, but you've lost three. So you've smashed it. 16 pounds in six weeks. How have you done it, Claire? Uh, I think just little changes, really. Obviously, I've cut down portion sizes, definitely. Um, so I've definitely taken, you know, just things like if I'm cooking rice or anything like that, not having a great big massive plate full because I always cook too much. Uh, so just taking it down a little bit, really, and then just being a bit more sensible. I haven't, I don't feel like I've had to do anything like terribly drastic that sort of really upset me or anything. I've had a few sort of cravings along the way, sort of chocolate and things, but nothing, it hasn't been too terrible. It's just been sensible, I think, really. And the good thing is you've eaten out a few times as well, haven't you? I have, yeah, yeah. There has been a few treats in there the odd week and We've, we sort of go for a carvery quite often. We've been out a few times. So we just sort of, if we go out for a meal in the day, I bet less in the evening or missed, missed one of the other meals if I've had a really big meal and just tried to sort of compensate for it a little bit. Now, during the six weeks as well, we've also had your birthday and Mother's yeah. Day. Like, could there be any more celebrations in six weeks? I know. <laughs> How did Easter you manage it? Days. How did you manage to avoid like going for a total binge on those celebrations? Uh, I think with my birthday, um, we were starting just a couple of days before. So we just went out the weekend before and I sort of, we had a carvery and I had a bit of cake with that meal and sort of did it then. Um, and then just really just adapting it because we've, we've still been out. I've just been careful what I've put on the plate a little bit more, that's all, and not sort of piled all the unhealthy bits on, so... And you did brief your kids what you were doing as well. So they knew not to bring you home like loads of chocolates or anything like that, which was good. Yeah, they've they been pretty good. We have been pretty good. We, uh, my son did buy me a bottle of wine uh, one night and he, he sort of come in and then went, oh, I don't know if I should have got you this or not, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I just kind of like, I had a, I had a glass and then I've had a glass another few days later. So I didn't, I didn't just drink it all like I might have done before. Oh, uh, so again, just being a little bit more sensible with it, really. What's been your highlight of the course, your favourite bit? Oh, um, I think probably the difference in sleep. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't sleeping at all. Uh, and I've got, you know, overall, I've got quite a lot of weight to lose. And I know that. Um, so I didn't expect to kind of lose masses and masses of weight. I'm quite happy with, with what I've lost. Uh, but I just wanted to feel a bit better, really, initially. Yeah. Uh, and I think I've done that. I do feel a bit better. And I'm a little bit more aware now of what I'm actually eating. Whereas before, I think I'd just choose not to see it, you know. Whereas now I think, oh, actually, no, I don't need that much. Or I can replace that with something. And just kind of thinking about it a little bit more. And I wasn't before, so. And do you think your family's eating habits have changed a little bit as well? Uh, I think a little bit, yeah. Not probably not my older son because he, he's sort of very stubborn and he's not going to give up anything. Um, but he does kind of go out and eats out a lot. Um, so kind of what he does once he's left the house, I can't really control yeah. what he eats outside. Um, but certainly with the kids, yeah, definitely because I was thinking a lot of the times I was cutting back, but then they were still eating quite a lot of processed stuff. And I'm thinking, well, why, you know, why am I giving giving it to them if I'm not eating it myself? That just sort of doesn't make sense. So there are times when obviously they will have something like, say, chicken nuggets because that's what they like and that's what they'll eat. Yeah. But I'm just sort of cutting back on, on the processed stuff a little bit for them now, just sort of, you know, making it so it's a little bit more healthy, but still what they'll actually eat. And hopefully making things like cottage pies and, you know, big hearty meals, you'll save a little bit of money as well if the whole family are eating the, the same thing. Yeah, I do. I do sort of cook in big batteries as well sometimes because I always I always overestimate food, especially things like potatoes, rice, all that kind of thing. But what I'll do now is I'll, I'll freeze quite a lot of it or save it or do it with something different the next day. 
Uh, so that that's quite good. And then the kids can have it with something that they like, whereas I could put something else on for me and my daughter, you know, and just sort of mix it up a bit, really. What's been your biggest challenge of the last six weeks? Um, I think probably two things, really. One's probably the chocolate side of it, because I do, I can give up things like cake and biscuits and all that kind of thing. I can even give up fatty food. It's just the chocolate's really difficult. So that's been quite hard. Uh, but again, it's just thinking, well, to be fair, I'm not eating it because I'm hungry. We don't tend to eat chocolate because we're hungry, do we? We tend to eat chocolate because it's there. Yeah. Um, and, then I think the other endless thing, <laughs> and then I think the other thing is just is the exercise. And I think that will probably for a long, a long time be kind of my weakness, really, because I hate it. I don't get any. I, I see people that sort of do all the different things and they clearly love it and they get something out of it my daughter's 17 she's always she's off on a bike she'll go for walks she's taking the dog she's going playing badminton and tennis and i, I just can't think of anything more mind-numbing than doing any yeah. of them <laughs> but you know i do i have been doing little bits in the house um i've like followed along with some of the videos that you that you do and if no one and no one's in, I'll kind of do, you know, 20 minutes, you know, while no one's looking kind of thing in the house. But to go out and do it, I'm I'm never going to do it. I'm not going to join a gym. So there's no point anyone telling me yeah. to because, you know, I'd be lying if I said I was going to go and do that because it's just not me. I just I can't think of anything worse than all these fat people <laughs> in these gyms. I just I, can't, I just can't do that. I can't be that person. <laughs> But I think this is a good thing about COVID. You know, there's so much now, loads of home workouts to do and loads of people are regularly doing it online and stuff at home. So this is a good positive for you. And I don't think you do ever need to join a gym or force yourself into doing anything you don't like. Just a little bit of light activity, like the walking sessions you've been joining in with me are perfect. So don't worry about that. Yeah, I think sometimes you, when you sort of try and do anything, there's this great big motivation in the beginning and everyone's like, well, I remember seeing a dietitian once and he was like, you know, well, you need to join a park run and then you need to do this and you need, and there were things. And I was saying to him, these are things I will not be doing. There's no yeah. point telling me to do it. I'm not going to do it. So if you're going to meet people where they're at, you've kind of got to listen to the person as well. You know, if they're saying, look, I want to try and I will do some things, but maybe just not that and that, then you've got to be able to kind of work with that a little bit, I think, because I'm never going to do it. It's not going to yeah. happen. <laughs> Which is why the GP and the NHS advice has always failed because it's all they've always been pushing exercise. Whereas Weight Watchers and Slimming World, they just talk about food and exercise is optional. I think this is what attracts people to it and is more sustainable as well, which is good. Yeah, and I think uh, exercise is difficult when you're bigger and people, I don't think people realise that unless you've kind of been bigger yourself. Yeah. It, it, it hurts and I don't just mean it hurts because you're not pushing through it I mean it, it literally hurts sometimes yeah. you can quite easily for yourself an injury trying to do something that you can't do so I think it's just meeting people where they're at at that, that time you know and then eventually hopefully you can sort of build that up a little bit even stretching you know a bigger person can't physically get in the positions that these people stretch in so it's very true so before we talk about chocolate, I just want to ask you about your goal for the future. Um, have you got any goals for the future? What sort, how much would you like to um, sort of time frame? I, think I haven't really got a time frame as such. Um, I think I'd just like to, at the very, very least, not put that stone back on. Because every, any, every time I've ever lost weight before, I think probably this is probably the most I've ever lost, actually. Yeah. So I'd like to keep it off. So that, that's in the back of my mind sort of more than anything else is at least, at the very, very least, keep that stone off. Uh, but then obviously if I can sort of add to that and just slowly take a little bit more off, that's, you know, going to make me feel better more than anything else. I'm, you know, not I'm not really about what I look like. It's more just about feeling a bit healthier and not yeah. feeling as tired all the time, that kind of thing. And you said you love chocolate, the same as me. Uh, this weekend is Easter. So what are the plans? Are you going to give yourself a treat? What are you going to have? When are you going to have Actually, it? Actually, we haven't, we, we haven't got any chocolate in the house, believe it or not, we haven't. We've got none. The kids had eggs uh, last week. They had an egg each. And yeah. then I've deliberately bought them. They've got like uh, magazines. They've got little toys. They've got some cuddly chicks and things. And oh. so there isn't actually any in the house at the moment. 
So if I stick to that, we'll be okay. Are you going to buy yourself one there? Uh, I might not, and I'll tell you why. Because I aren't very good at this little bit of something, don't have too much business. I'm very much a kind of all or nothing person. So if I have it in the house, I will eat yeah. it, and I know I will. <laughs> so I think best just kind of avoid. I mean, if we go out, if we go out anywhere, um, if we do, we haven't got anything planned, but if we do perhaps go out for a meal, then, you know, I might sort of have a little bit of one of the kids' puddings or that kind of thing, you know, a little taste it's rather than having me over yeah. one. But I think that's quite a good one because sometimes me and my daughter now when we go out, she'll say, well, if you did want a pudding one, we could share one. So right. at least, again, that's, you know, at the end of the day, it's half the calories. It's still not brilliant because yeah. you're still having something unhealthy, but you are only having half the portion. Uh, I so I think just, just things like that, really. Just having that rule as well about eating healthy in the house and whenever you go out, allowing yourself to have a treat is a really healthy thing to do it on the long term. And obviously it's good for sustainability as well. You're getting that 80, 20, still having a little bit of a treat, but it's not there so you can gorge on at home when the kids have gone to bed. Or yeah, and I think like it's good that. for the kids as well because they aren't, the kids are, you know, if they're hungry now, they'll have like, they're having a piece of oatmeal toast or they're having a banana and because I haven't got as much in the house as what I used to have. Yeah. Um, they are looking for other things now, or they're going, they're having a yogurt instead, or you know, they're having something different. So there's not apart from there's crisps in the house, which I don't eat, so that's okay. And apart from that, there's not really that much on healthy stuff in the house at the moment. But that doesn't mean they can't have it, it just means perhaps yeah. we'd have it if we went out for the day, or you know, it's not just here all the all the time, because I think you just pick at it, don't you, if you know it's in the Absolutely. cup. Absolutely. Great. Right. That's it from me. So the good news is I get to meet you very soon, maybe next week. Yeah, that's and, great. Um, so I've never met you before. Yeah. We are friends through a friend and we're all going to meet up, aren't we, when I get back from holiday? Yeah, that's lovely. I really look forward to that. Thank you so much for being one of our... That's really uh, happy for your help. When, you, when you first asked me, I was very, uh, oh my God. <laughs> I was trying to think how I could just tell you to sod off, but politely. <laughs> but then I thought no no you know go on and it's you know it sort of proved I, I could actually do it because I didn't think I could so amazing Claire well done really really great right thank you yeah. again and I will see you very soon happy Easter enjoy the rest of your holiday thank you very much bye thank for you, now bye, -bye. bye.